Jag vet inte om kommissarien inte... Det kan inte funka nu längre. Carl. Du vill stå bara tugga här. Jag tror inte det går att kommentera efter... Har du lägga upp den i kommentaren? Nej. Det är det jag inte kan, tror jag. Du vill stå bara tugga här. Aj, aj, aj. Nu kör vi, nu är det en hel live här. Ja. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we'll see if undergo input lag from Queen direct for the link here. From here. Where did it? Yeah, from here. Okay, way yeah. better. We have 15 following us. Uh, I don't know if we were able to post the link in the last. Sorry for the trouble, guys. Uh, I think we lost a couple of viewers, but I don't know how we will do to get them back. Can you comment in the, in the Yeah. Um, Can make a comment? I try to post it there if it's possible. Or, okay, my comment, I think it's 22. Just got another question, so I presume others will do, okay. okay. Some Craig got a notification, so I presume others will also start with scissors. Okay, uh, we have a, yeah. We'll get started then. Sorry for all the inconvenience. Technology has been on our side until now, but today we had a minor bump, <laughs> but now we're good to go. Uh, hi everyone, and welcome to uh, the second episode of the Tormen sharpening class. Uh, we're here at the Tormek headquarters in Lindesberg, Sweden, just like last time. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all the viewers for all the comments and all the positive feedback we got from the last episode. It's really fun to see all the engagement from, from you guys. It's for, for you we do it, and we really like the, to get the interaction with you. Uh, it's fun, I saw people from all over the world today as well, from South Africa, Uruguay, Australia, US, UK, even some neighboring countries to Sweden. So it's fun to see, it's really people from all over the world. Uh, as I say, so that today we will do some scissors and axe sharpening. We will go for about 45 minutes an hour. Uh, and just like last time, please fire away with questions. We'll try to answer them as best as we can during the show. If we don't have time to answer them, please comment below and we'll answer them afterwards in, 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 on YouTube. Great uh, presentation. I should present myself, perhaps. Uh, my name is Sebastian uh, and I'm a country sales manager uh, here at Tormek. I am responsible for Western Europe, South Africa, uh, Australia and New Zealand. And with me I have my colleague Wolfgang. You can present yourself. Yeah. Hello everyone, and we saw from Germany and Switzerland too, nearby where I come from. And um, yeah, these are my markets, Central and South and East Europe. And uh, yeah, we'll have the second part today. You're ready. I'm ready to be go. Behind the camera is Carl from Marketing. Uh, he will be acting cameraman today. <laughs> Welcome, Carl. Hello, hello. Thank you. Great. Uh, if you come over here, Carl, we can show you uh, the tools we are going to sharpen. Um, we thought we would start with a regular scissor, uh, which uh, Wolfgang will sharpen from start to finish. And then we will show the theory how you sharpen a shear scissor. And then when we are done with the scissors, we go over to the axis. We will, sh uh, we will sharpen from finish to end a, a bent axe. Uh, and then we will also show the theory about uh, an axe with a straight edge. That's, I think, about what we will have time for today. And also, we will ask questions. Uh, we will please ask questions. We will answer them. And if for the axe questions, we will ask, uh, answer them after the axes and the scissor questions after the scissors. So we try to s separate the questions a bit. But just fire away with questions. I hand it over with a warm hand to Wolfgang. Let's, let's okay. do some sharpening. We do. So, how to sharpen just a normal household scissor, paper scissors, what the children play with. Even you can sharpen the, the, 
uh, I think it's called type uh, cloth scissors for uh, uh, the woman to sew. They have quite heavy old scissors, but it's always the same uh, procedure and principle. And for that, we will use today also our T8, demonstrate on it, even placed on uh, the RB180, the rotating um, turning table, which is quite practical even for today. And we will sharpen also from the position uh, in front of the machine, um, compared to uh, we sharpened last time our uh, knives from the other side, from behind the machine. What we will use today is the Chick ES X850. These are two parts. And we have prepared the stone here more or less on 250, 1000. This is perfect for, for the scissors. You can do also finer, but um, depends on the type of scissors, which we will talk, talk a little bit later on. First of all, you place the back plate just here on, on the universal support, block it just slightly, and then lower the universal support as slow as you can on, on the stone. But be careful, we have at least a little bit space if we only correct the angle that we don't touch the, the stone. This is what we'd like to avoid, but quite close as possible. Okay, you said you were sharpening from this side and the other time you had it around. Did you sharpen from this side because it's easier to control the, the yep. jig since it's a... Exactly. The reason why we do it, because we have the motion of the stone is like that, so we will get pressed against the blade so it's easier to control. Otherwise, when we do it vice versa, you, you get the lift of it so we can very easily control it we get a natural pressure on it. So, now the next question is, what angle on a, on a scissor? So you can say more or less, roughly all scissors have about 60 degrees. So we have three methods to, um, to get the, the 60 degrees. First of all, we can use our angle master. And you can check exactly also here the angle, you see. That the edge, one side of the plate here is against here and then the bevel itself. And so this is how you can measure it. We could say perhaps that 60 degrees is quite common for scissors. Yeah, for sometimes most. 65, sometimes 55, but 60 is uh, quite yeah. common. Exactly. So, and how to get these 60 degrees on the, on the scissor? So we will clamp the scissor into the cheek. Now, important is that you have more than 90 degrees here, because if you have less than 90 degrees, you can't sharpen all the way in, you will touch the stone on the outside. So always open more than 90 degrees. If you have a scissor, which is impossible to open more than 90 or exact 90 degrees, you have to be careful. Otherwise you can sharpen only maybe only that way. Depends how you can open it. Otherwise, some scissors you can take apart. Then also bigger scissors and very thick and heavy duty scissors, it's quite easy to take them apart and, and sharpen them separately, but the normal scissors. So then you can clamp here. You don't need to go all the way in here. It's also with, as the knife jig, it's enough with a, just a few millimeters. And then, oops, exactly <laughs> what I want to show. Not to show. <laughs> you, you did right. You moved away your feet and, and at least. So that's exactly. Good... Never grip a knife or a falling tool, just get away from it, otherwise you will cut yourself. You have good reflexes. So 
uh, one thing I want to show you, some scissors like this, you see it's quite thick here, and special cloth scissors, scissors will interfere here, and you have a problem when you go too close in. So you can go just a little bit outside and you have more, more space here that you get more than 90 degrees. Because some people have a problem. Then of the design of a scissor, I can talk also a little bit. This is a scissor who goes all the way in. Some scissors stop here with the edge maybe a half a centimeter before. And when you sharpen, you don't see it. What I do, take a pen, make a marking on the back side, then I know where to stop. Just as a small tip here. So now we going to clamp it a little bit like that. Then again, just here, try to get a little bit out, a little bit harder here. Quite parallel, but sometimes it's impossible to get it really parallel in here. Depends on the shape. Some scissors are quite round. So you have to play a little bit to get a, a good grip. So there's no universal recipe how to do it because uh, of the shape. What I do also a little bit here, the main thing is here, you normally don't need to clamp here, but because you have a quite steep angle here, so we get a vibration and a very ugly sound. So I prefer even to fix the tip of the, the scissor, so we get less vibrations like that. So, now we have clamped it, and now to find the right angle. I said three methods. The first method is just to use our angle master. This side, the stone is new, 250 millimeters. If you have a T4, you have to move it forward to 200 or less. Depends how often you use your machine because you have here the scale on the machine. So that means you can use also a piece of wood or a pencil just to check where are you in, in the scale and then you have to correct it here. So 60 degrees on the bottom scale. I'll show you just when I've moved the finger, on the bottom scale. You have a scale on here, just to clarify, forget this. We use only the upper scale when we sharpen with the MB100. This is the adapter, the multi-base, when you can sharpen on this outside of the stone. So then we have another scale. So the standard scale is at the bottom. It's the one that's bigger and thicker. Yeah, is, exactly. Is yeah. the standard. And then we have to just, of course, fix it here. And then hold it flat against the, the bottom blade. And then always, you see, it's difficult to see for you maybe now because it's between. I will try to make it here on the outside against the blade. And it's the same principle like for um, the knives. How do you see it? No. Maybe you come from my side, maybe there is a possibility to see it. I'll go with the hands down. You see in the bottom the, the gap? This is what we want to get yes. a part of it. So now we go just flat on, so that we get 60 degrees. Yeah, so what's important is to uh, have a bit of space here. So on the can, side. Yeah, so you can come exactly. in with the angle master. master. Or if you can do it here, if enough, there you can do it in the middle. Yeah. It's the same. But as you see, it is a little bit tricky. And there's a, a small trick. If you see the shape of the, the cheek here, it's a little bit triangular. It's not parallel. And that's exactly 10 degrees. So that means when we change here from 60 up to 70 degrees, just at 10 degrees from your scissors, 
what you measured, if you have measured 50 degrees, then you choose 60 degrees, of course, just at 10 degrees to your initial number. And then you can use here quite close, and then you can use directly on the bottom blade. So you just add 10 degrees and it's exactly the same. Just and it, it's too sometimes cool. people find sometimes find this easier because you see it clearer and also it's faster. You don't have to, yeah. Exactly. So it's hold uh, and tricky. So it's much easier you can adjust it. The other way is if you don't know the angle or you angle mass is not at hand, always with our atomic marker, just Blacken the edge. And I think I said that to the knives also, but even if you use Angle Master, I like in the beginning to, to blacken the, the bevel because you get an immediate response how the sharpening is taking, if you're making mistakes, if you're taking the hole. So it's, it's always also an advantage, even if you use Angle Master, you can use the black marker as well, just to make sure. That you touch all yeah, the exactly, bevel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because you never know if you touch really the edge perfectly. So we try, parallel on it, hold it, just take the stone, scratch around. It's not really visible. And it was not really. So, and you see, it was not exactly 60 degrees here. This is a, it is a little bit more up to correct. This is our scissor, what we have in our sharpening studio. Everyone is training and testing. We have now up and a little bit too far. A little bit back again, then we will have it. So, hold them against here. We can do it also the same way. The advantage with the black so marker method. You see? Now it's, I think, good to see we get all the... We should say that also for the ones who didn't see the knife episode, that the advantage with the black marker method is also that you remove a minimum amount of material, which makes the scissor last longer, the sharpening faster, exactly, uh, etc. Because we don't have to create a new bevel. A no, new exactly. Facet. So, and now you see the movement against, so I get automatically the pressure to it. That I don't get interference with the, the other side of the, the scissor, with the outside. I hold it here with my finger. And then, Carl, maybe if you see from the side also, I put it flat on the back holder and just my hand behind. So I have really flat together. And just keep this movement here, sliding here. And with that hand, I guide. And then, I just very carefully, because this scissor is going all the way in, so I want to avoid to touch this side also because I have flattened it. So no too much pressure, just on it, carefully flat on it. And now it can sound a little bit ugly, so be aware, maybe you have your earphones on, just maybe take a little bit uh, the, the noise or the, the volume down because it can be uh, we are quite happy today, it's not too much, but now you see, and then you lift a little bit here, and then just the way back, and over, and then you see a lift a little bit because this scissor has a little bit uh, curved form, but we have not reached all the way in here. We have to just in the middle. Lifting at the tip, it's the same technique as for the knife, uh, as we discussed last time. It's the same, same theory, same basic. Um. So, it's a little bit left here. Otherwise, here it looks really beautiful. And as you said, the sound, there is no, no danger with the sound, it's just vibrations. Uh, you can take away a bit of the sound without, if you put less pressure on it, it sounds less. Um, 
Are you getting there? Yeah, just a little bit in the edge. Perfect. Uh, we have got questions about uh, sharpening scissors on our diamond wheels uh, quite some times before. And it's possible to do, but we don't really recommend using the diamond wheels. Uh, for sharpening scissors since it's so steep angles yep. and you might risk to, to damage the diamond wheel. So we... Because this is quite aggressive. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. The vibration is high then... And especially on a brand new diamond wheel, perhaps you should yep. be careful. Uh, so now we're all the way through. And this also shows it's important that you you sharpen quite a bit here, maybe a little bit rounder, you don't get in that you have a flat uh, stone until the edge here. And the other side, it's absolutely simply to do. You take the... out and just turn it around and clip it in the same way. to get in here the tip so that it's more open again than 90 degrees hold it and again as we have in the first part just onto the stop don't overdo it it's not holding harder you will just destroy the, the thread here and here's exactly the same and then down carefully that you don't touch this side because it is sharpened. And then and this is total normal if you have a, this squeaking noise. The tip is not all the way through. So, then one bevel, and then you feel also it's getting already a bite. So, now this is sharp. Now also the question, the burr, um, for the scissors. Perfect, a little bit long, quite. There are two methods. You take a piece of wood and just go through lengths through the, um, the fibers. But most people don't have it at home immediately. Just press a little bit the, the scissors against this over there and this is over. Just a little bit like this and cut it off. Be careful with your fingers. Exactly. We should perhaps explain more because in last episode we talked a lot about removing burr, the importance of removing burr and so on. But with scissors, that is not the case Absolute. because scissors are one of the few tools where the burr actually helps us because here it, we want to catch the material, the paper or the cloth or whatever. Yep. And then some burr is even good e to have. Exactly. Just imagine my hand here. This is the surface of the, of the edge. And you have these small grooves and a little bit like it's a zigzag. Yeah. It will catch the material. Otherwise, if it's too polished, this is also maybe an answer on some questions we will get. Shall I do it because nice and shiny everything yeah. on the Japanese stone? If you would do it, it will be sliding out. It doesn't get a grip. So you need a little bit this rougher surface for a scissor to, to cut perfect. Exactly. And then we come over maybe the, uh, the uh, hairdresser scissors. Yeah, we, we had some barber well, scissor <laughs> question. Well, the barber, uh, there's the same, exactly. One. So you yep. can uh, talk a bit about that, perhaps. Yes, it is possible, but, I say but, because it had to be very perfect done. So we don't recommend it if you're not really good trained. Because if you think you cut, um, it gets a little bit always stuck to the hair. It is not very pleasant feeling. You see that a hairdresser and always it tips. They cost a fortune, the good scissors. 
Yeah, we, we don't recommend the hairdresser scissors for many yeah. reasons, but there are so many different shapes. Uh, they exactly. are very expensive. It needs to be razor sharp. Uh, and they need a service mostly also here in the, in the where the screw is yeah. and the angle just to really sit perfect together. Yeah, exactly. But, so. but with that said, we know people that do it and are satisfied with the result, but we have, we don't recommend it since, uh, but if you're going to do it, the Japanese stone is, is the way to go, yep. right? Otherwise, normal scissors never, even if you have gloss scissors for the finest silk, it is not good. Important is that you maybe oil them and adjust here also to get a good result. And how to test if a scissor is sharpened or not. Uh, there's one thing, uh, if you can cut all the way and your curve or just all the way through without any uh, hook, just smooth and soft and you don't get see any fibers sticking out, it's like ribbon, you see it's quite easy. And also in the tip, it's a nicely clean cut to the end. Sometimes it will go like that, then it's, the finish is not good. But that one is cutting like butter. Yep, then it's a perfect Great, should cut. we see if we have some questions, Volkan? What do you yep. think? Yeah, of course, sure. Uh, before we start with our yeah, before we go Edward the scissors. Shear scissors. Yeah. Uh, do you sharpen at 220 and then 1000 grits? On the stone? No, this is uh, the stone was now uh, roughly between, it was finer uh, than 220 but uh, not exactly 1000 so it's something between, yeah. it's for a normal scissor absolutely perfect. If you have a heavy damaged scissor for example the children uh, sometimes cut in uh, just a little uh, wire or so or in yeah, so if it's bad cardboard or plastic and you have a, a, a check in there then I go a little bit rougher but uh, because the angle is quite steep and aggressive to the stone, it will get quite smooth in the end. So you don't need to prepare as much as when you do it for, for a scissors. Great. Philip asks, are you saying that hairdressing scissors should, shouldn't be sharpened on the SG250? Yes, that's what we're saying. And if you're going to do it, we would recommend the Japanese water stone. But even then, we say be careful and it's not it's not a recommendation from us yeah uh, we'll see we have uh, if we have any more questions there are some questions about access and so on and I will try to answer them after the access session because I'm sure that uh, Wolfgang will be answering some of those questions as well uh, during his presentation um, we had a question about honing scissors. We answered that one. Uh, we had the grit question. Uh, what about garden scissors? Yes, this is like you have different ones like for cutting the grass, for hedges, uh, different sizes, or the classical traditional ones. Uh, or like this is some, I suppose this model was on some longer sticks to cut in the trees. Uh, it's the same exactly the same principle, more than 90 degrees, or you have here a little bit luck, you can't, you need to sharpen here, so it can be even a little bit less, but not over that exact line here, because it's not going always uh, all the way in. And the same thing, just, you see, this is the side we have to sharpen, on it, clamp it in the middle, and then you just even mark it black and find the angle. In the same way we have done here on that side. Open a little bit. Yeah, it's the exact same theory, just, it's just a bigger scissor, so it takes a bit longer, you clamp it in both, otherwise it's yep. exactly the same uh, technique and everything. It can also be a bit more unstable since there is more material touching the stone, so yep. Exactly the same, you see, and then you find this quite angle is quite flat. And the same thing, just, um, and this is what I've meant before, because you see here, not going always all the way in here, it stops here. This is what I do, 
because on that side I don't see where it stops. I make uh, just a little bit a marker here. And this is exactly the same for normal household scissors. When you sharpen, you see where to stop. Not further than here, because otherwise you come here, you feel it already. It's a stop. Just sharpen until here. So this is absolute the same. Deburring through a piece of wood or just cut against each other. Great. We have a lot of questions here of different tools. Uh, I don't know exactly all the tools, what they are, but pruning secateurs. Se yes. Uh, this is a you sheet can metal shears. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also pruning scissors. We don't have actually no one here, but pruning scissors, um, most are fixed and you can't take them apart. Everything is complete in one. And the problem is with those, these are mostly one way. It's very difficult or you need a, a file, a nice fine file to make it by hand. Uh, the good ones, they have mostly blades. You can take them out, the blades, and then I use only the knife uh, chick, what we have, the SVM 45, and clamp them, and then you can go like very easily. Like, a, shape, knife, like, a, like knife. a knife, very yeah. easily. Otherwise, uh, if you have just the, take them apart in two halves, then you can try to clamp them in, in, the, in this chick or even with the knife chick. This is sometimes you have to, to try and find a way because there's, it's difficult. There are so many different models out there. But in that way, and in the worst case, you can do everything freehand, of course. It's then getting more, a little bit more difficult, of course. Perfect. Thank you, Wolfgang. T you. Time is flying. We, we should head, move forward toward the axe yes. part, I think. Yes. We'll um, take this away. I'll give you this bent Just, axe. To yes. Show you a bit. What we do with that, the same thing is just take this uh, apart and get the axe chick here. These are most simple chick, but very, very useful to maintain uh, the angle and uh, a good guidance. We use it also from that side against it's the same principle. I think we have to go a little bit upward. We have the same principle against it because we get this movement and good fixation. Then it depends on how thick the axes are. We have plenty of time for a smaller one. Even if you have the bigger ones, you don't go, need to go all the way in. It's even enough just to get something to hold against it. So I've sharpened always, uh, also um, from the timber spots, from the guys, they're quite big ones, just go all the way up. Or even for those, if the chick is too short, I can show you our US 430, which is just quite a bit longer. Then it's really no problem to sharpen even big axes. But for that small one, and for the most and common ones, is this universal support, our standard support supplied with the machine, absolutely uh, perfect. So, now we have to find this angle. The easiest way, of course, is again, and to see that we touch all the sides, I just make them, well, blacken it with the, Marker, so, that's the easiest way. Or for this one, I think it was sharpened by uh, 40 degrees, that means 20 degrees from both sides. Um, this is quite a good angle for even a little bit small woodworking or yeah, chipping wood. And especially if you are in the woods and want uh, split wood, then you have a much thicker axe 
and a steeper angle because you need just a little bit of cut and then the X, the shape of the X is doing the work. But this is a small one which you can use also in spoon carving. What do you yeah. have done here uh, a few weeks ago? You can also, if you're doing, using it for spoon carving, I would have a perhaps a bit smaller. Uh, Moth. Yes, yeah, so perhaps 30 degrees, 15 on each side. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Uh, so it depends on the use of the axe or what you want to use it for. You, you try Absolute, to yeah. change the... The, the more uh, bigger the angle, the more heavy duty, I would yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. And for the small work, and this is a, a lighter axe, about six or 700 grams, you will not, never do these heavy duty no, stuff. No, it's not the idea. So, I think, yeah, some idea maybe if you have the bigger ones uh, and the heavy duty axes, because sometimes they are used to get as a hammer or just to, to um, work knocking on, on, on some wood or stones, uh, you will get a wide, quite a broad top here. Then you use just a file, get rid of the excess material that it fits again. And even that it's easier to guide, otherwise you have a little bit bumpy road here. So, important is? Should you show quickly how the angle master is used? Yep, you... exactly. This is what I try first. Yes. The other side, the marker method, it's uh, self-explaining again through the height. We can find the, the heights. Important is that it, the X is really when you got up here, you see you have a little bit of play. When you put it up, it can end up here, and it's not flat in the bottom here. Important is really that it lies on the, on the bottom part and all the way up. Then you place it here, and then again our, our angle master. Uh, I'm not as good one-handed. Just change from the 70 down to 20. And again, don't forget to adjust that side after a while you have used the stone. Because you don't do it so often, then you will forget it. So, and here we have a quite a wide bevel, so we can measure the bevel. You see, we are quite a part of it. We can go, whoops, here. Well, so 20, was it 40, really? I don't know what the angle no. was. I don't know, it was not 40. No. <laughs> you see, we can measure it, what it was. And we open it. Now it's really live here. This one side, it's round. Look it up. 35, 36 or 37. Yeah. Is it the... Because here looks quite good. The easiest way, and for the X, the exact angle is not so so vital, because if it's two degrees more or less, it doesn't matter. See slightly on the top, a little bit. We, we, top. The most common is we use the black marker method on X yeah. because we it's, we remove less material. We, we reproduce the same bevel that it was from the beginning, so, so it's, it's quicker and it's... Um, Faster. Yes. A little bit more up again. What we could say, perhaps also, is that often uh, axes are hand-forged, so the first time you sharpen a, an axe, uh, the bevel won't, it won't take material all over, and that's not because you're doing something wrong, it's because the axe is not perfectly... Um, in, even this thick all the way, so you have to set a new bevel the first time you, you sharpen an axe. This is exactly a little bit too high, so uh, even the shape they are hand forged, they are different thickness on both sides. Yeah. It can happen that the bevel in the beginning is much wider on that side than on the other side, yeah. because in the end it's the same angle, but it looks wider because it was thicker on one side. Yeah, so I've been to a lot of sharpening classes and people are like, I'm doing something wrong. And it's, it's not necessarily you, so it can be the, the axis shape that uh, first time. Forward. So, and then 
just as a clamp here, and I put my hand here so I can put the pressure, it's flat on it, and then I can just give the shape here, and then I move also over just to use the stone as much as possible and flat as possible. Because otherwise, when you just on one spot turn around, we'll get a groove here in the stone. So that means if you have a, some straight tool, like a chisel or a kitchen knife or whatever afterwards, you will sharpen only on the, in the outside on the higher points, not in the middle. And uh, even for a chisel, it will end up in uh, not a 90 degree. So then you have just to drew the stone afterwards. Um, if you just go over here, oh, you see, over the stone, use the complete stone. It's easy that you get a small groove even with that technique, but compared to be on just one spot all the time, the groove will quite quickly be quite significant if you are just on one spot yeah. all the time. So. You see, we nicely got it, but not to the end and here to the end. That means sometimes to you, and for me, you see, it's the same. When you go round, ah, it's enough. It's always in the edges, mostly for most tools, a little bit more. Um, you think here, no, it's a little bit more to get just. The complete shape. And through this method, you see, again, all the way through, same bevel, less material you take away, and therefore quite fast, you see, a few strokes. On the other side, exactly the same. If I come on this side, then you will see it also. Just again, flat on it, over, go down. So actually the main A little movement bit again also to the sides, not exactly over to the side, so just a few strokes more. Um, no, the, uh, the main movement you're doing to, to sharpen is you lower and you... Just turn around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, the reason you're moving back and forth is more to avoid getting the stone... Exactly. Uh, a bump uh, in, a in it. Yeah. And then maybe a small tip here again. Uh, if you have the hand here, sometimes you interfere with the, the leather wheel. You need, need to hold it like this. You can go over here so you get a little bit space. Or sometimes you have a little bit thicker handles, uh, more carving uh, axes, which are maybe interfering then with the ladder wheel. Just, or the stone is smaller. Just take your, away the, the ladder wheel. So it's absolute no problem here. You get an additional four, four centimeters. Yeah, exactly. And I've put with my hand where the pressure may be about three kilos or so. Just a little bit, the tip. But then again, nicely, perfect. And all the way through, you feel the burr on the other side. So I really got all the way down, just get the tip. So, done. And now we will hoon it. Just to give the little bit extra, especially for foot carving axes. It's the same like carving tools, knives. The less burr you have, it cuts better, it doesn't drip. It gives a nice cut. The edge holds much longer because all the, the burr you have will rip off and take off a little bit of the edge. And here again, just take this off. Take the PA70, our hooning paste on the leather uh, wheel, and um, just add a little bit this amount here in the, in the tip, not too much, because more helps not more, or how you say, too much is 
Less is more. Less is more. Uh, we have questions here. They are discussing, for example, if you should use a T4 or a T8, uh, which is easy for, for the beginners. I would say that both machines, these techniques are applicable for T4. Exactly. T4 and T8 are just as easy to use both machines. It's no. If you have bigger tools, of course, and you will use your machine more and more, then I would go maybe on a T8 yeah. or um, have to sharpen quite a lot. But normally... But the techniques are exactly the, the same. Technique is both, the uh, same. And hooning again, sharpening is important, but hooning is exactly important as the, 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 the sharpening. I start from the beginning uh, of, and then go over on, on the bevel and then you see the small particles. This is the, the burr coming up and then you see just good, good pressure, good control, stable angle and you see I use the machine here for example you can hold here or just get fixed a little bit to your body and you can have a nice, a nice and smooth movement over the bevel. You see how it's nice and shiny you get. And we do the same and then you have maybe here the problem with the stone but you can go just a little bit on the side. You see already small particles. They had a discussion if, the, uh, if sharpen an axe on the Japanese water stone. Uh, they, they are discussing it in the questions that I would say not necessary. It's a bit of an overkill. You can always. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, necessary, especially if you just for for the forest. No. In in carving, fine work it can be beneficial, but it's not a must. Because the steel is quite soft when you go down on 1,000 on the stone, yeah. and it then you will, can you polish it, it the rest out of the the, the X yeah. easily. And, and hopefully you will show us how um, how sharp it gets just with the regular SG250 stone. Just in yep. a minute, right, Wolfgang? So. I've done uh, just to, uh, with a Japanese stone last year in, in um, October in uh, Austria with uh, Sina Buloy. We had a nice chip carving session and then in the morning with fun we used uh, this X, or this type is not exactly this one, but from Grand Fosch the same size, with this tip here. And we got, went on the Japanese stone, she carved with the tip with three cuts in chip carving, nicely perfect, less than a millimeter. Yeah. It was beautiful. So you can do already extreme stuff too. Should we see if you can cut through paper with that? We will see. But this is helps. plenty sharp enough, I would say. I think that's okay. Perfect. And then we go over to... Yeah, you can just show how you would do with the straight, the straight axe, one. perhaps. And exactly. then we'll take a couple of questions. Exactly. Uh, and then the same principle in here. Mark the, the bevel through the height, get the right uh, angle. And that way you don't need to move. You see, just straight. Don't go like this, because then you end up a little bit on the edges. Just stride over, and then you go. You pull back and forth. All the way through, even smooth. And the other side, exactly. The same. And here again, we use, as we said before, the power against. Yeah. We had a question about a convex egg on an axe. How? Yeah, you can do it. So there, there's one way. The easiest way is you use exactly the same method. 
and that means that the convex, we don't, now we get a little bit concave face, and convex means that rounding is mostly for splitting axes. That means they have not this shape, they have this shape. Exactly. And to get this with our stone, what I do is just start uh, a little bit lower that I don't touch uh, the edge. And then I make in the straight or in the rounded my bevel. Then I go maybe two turns with the micro adjust here, with that one. I lift the machine a little bit. So that means maybe two rounds up and take the next shape. And then I go additionally two turns up. So slowly and slowly until you get onto the edge. Then you get uh, different facets, small facets round. This is that way when you want to a perfect edge, I prefer maybe to start vice versa from the top. Make first the edge, then it's perfect, and then I lower two rounds, and then lower and lower to get, in the end, the nice that concave shape. shape uh, nice concave, uh, concave shape. This is the easiest way. If you are well drained and a good feeling and have sharpened a while, you can do it from that side, freehand with the support, you lie on it, and then you can choose that way, but needs a little bit skill because you want to maintain a nice round shape, not different facets there too. I had a question at the beginning about he got problem with the groove in the stone after sharpening with an axe, and that could very easily happen. Uh, if you have yeah, so heavy damage, you have yeah. to sharpen quite a while. So try to, to, to use the whole stone as you did, yep. uh, and then of course, if I would do a, a planer blade straight after an axe, I think I would use a TT50 to make exactly. sure I'm perfectly straight. Then I will uh, go with a TT50 just to flatten it exactly. Especially a planer blade, where you want to the absolute perfect shape also. Great, and uh, then we had a question about if you have, I think it, they called it a double double axe, I think it's an axe on each side, then the jig of course is a bit complicated. It doesn't work because um, you have like the, the, the throwing axes. But you could use... Perfect, exactly this one. And then I go... No, a little bit more open. This side. And then... Yeah, that's sorry. Yep, the two should. rest, 100 and SVD, 110. Sometimes, then you some, can sometimes I joke, I say that's my get out of jail card. Well, but if we, have, we haven't a tool that is, uh, or a jig that suits a tool perfectly, that one is often helping us out for all kinds of different tools. Exactly, uh, at least you have uh, something to hold, to lean on it, to use as a stabilizer to get at least a little bit uh, perfect. Yeah, and you get a steady yeah. angle and so on. So it's, uh, and it's like here good, also, uh, you can lie on here because it's round also. Maybe you find on your axe the other side and then you can use that flat side from this axe. But here you have to be careful. I mostly when I do this, when I hold it, I hold it like, like this here because if you apply a little bit pressure, you will throw, uh, draw up the stone. And this is what you want to avoid. You want to keep the angle. So I can hold here with my finger as a turning point, or at least can easily hold when I get the catch sometimes up to hold the tool, tool back, just to maintain a, a perfect angle. Great. Uh, we have had a couple of questions outside of the topic. Uh, for example, they said they liked our sharpening station, but it was expensive. We like our sharpening <laughs> station as well. It's, it's very handy. I can just show yep. you quickly. And the top box, the different kits. Uh, it's very stable. You can also 
higher and lower the, the stands. You can hang the, the wheels uh, on the side of the You can counter. lock it. Uh, we also have questions about prices. For prices, I recommend you to visit the Tormek website because it's different yep. in different countries and you find your nearest retailer on the Tormek website. Uh, great. I, time flies when you have fun, Wolfgang. Okay. One thing we forgot. What did we forget? We have people who have left-handed scissors. Yes, that's true. This, I think, will come up the question. This is <laughs> not so often, but sometimes it come up. The problem is with uh, the scissor, the left, this one, the right hand, no problem are clamped here. But the left hand, we have to clamp from this side. Then we have a problem because we have the housing here and the handle. This is a smaller one, but still interfering on the bottom. So these scissors, 99% you can take apart. Then it's absolutely no problem because this part you can take away. Then you sharpen this one and then you take the other one. If it's impossible to take apart, just place it in the horizontal position. And then, just clamp a little bit quickly, just to show you. And then you can do it from here. But again, here you have one problem that the tendency is that you get drawn up on the stone. So you have really to hold here with your fingers and press it down. Yeah, so so it, don't it's, it's a bit more go. uncomfortable, but it works. It works well. also. Yeah. But they are not so common, but in case you have a sharpening service and people come with that type of scissor and you wonder, no, I can't get the bevel because the bevel is on the other side. This is the left-hand scissor. It's, it's great you took care of all the leftists out there, so they also got their small tips. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, time flies when you have fun. I had yeah. fun. I hope you had fun, Wolfgang. Too, absolutely. Uh, I would like to thank you for being here. Thank you, Carl, for Good camera, holding man. the camera. After a, a bumpy start, you've been really stable. Uh, thank you, all the viewers, for watching. Uh, um, we will come with a new episode in a week or two. Yep. Uh, don't forget to uh, comment below what you thought about the episode, what if you have questions, what you'd like to see more uh, about in the future. Until next episode, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay sharp. Thank you. And see you.